What is going on guys, it is Venom Surge here, and welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Online. In today's episode, we will be checking out Deadlands Demolisher. This is a craftable set that came from the Deadlands DLC. With this set, you can choose any weight since it is craftable, and this guide will be including crafted sets, as long as they're not commonly used, which there's not too many commonly used craftable sets. So, Deadlands Demolisher, we are doing a full heavy across the whole board, all divines with max health. This is going to be a little of an interesting build, so this is a tank build in a way. So the first piece gives you max stam, Weapon spell damage, max stam again. Your bash deals about 1,000 more damage. That is per bash and just straight up at all times. When you bash, you also deal 6.5k physical damage in a cone in front of you, interrupting enemies hit. The cone bash can occur once every two seconds, and that also counts as bash, bash damage. So on this target here, for the first two seconds, that little red AoE is what it is. Now if you notice, our bashes are quite heavy with this build. Before we get into the second set, I need to explain to you guys how bash damage works in this update. So you guys should be able to see my notepad here. I went through and tested out all of these different things here to see what increases bash damage. Health did not, stam did not, weapon damage did not. As you can see 1135 was the base damage. I tested this with only using the same set so that way there's no constant changing and it was across my jewelry and weapons so that way armor passives and other things did not get into effect so these three had no effect crits do affect penetration did but that's just because we're getting through more of the armor resistance was the main one that increased your bash damage this passive here that we are a sork and in the sorks passives one of the things I wasn't sure was this increases your physical and shock damage by 5%. This actually does affect your bash. I tested it without the skill and my bash was actually less. The brutality rain did increase. Minor berserk also increased. And this ranged taunt, one of our skills that we'll go over in a little, provides an extra damage taken by me. And that also increased. Now the other set we are using is Zofkins. Because I want as much damage as possible, crit is easier to get up rather than doing max armor and then also trying to get your weapon damage up. So Zofkins is going to be across the weapons and jewelry. On the weapons, this is all infused bashing enchant. On the front bar, we are using a one-handed mace with the normal physical damage enchant and precise. And then for the shield, we're doing max stam and divines. Softkins gives you crit chance, crit chance, offensive penetration. When you deal crit damage, you gain a stack of precision, increasing your crit chance up by 177 for 5 seconds, up to 10 stacks max. At max stacks, you also gain minor force, increasing your crit damage by 10% the stacks can occur every half second. So that is what allows us to build up our crit chance here. So we can get about 55% crit chance, and then we can also get about 32 crit damage on top of the normal 50, so that's 82% crit damage. For the back bar, we are using a Zofkin's Ice Staff. You could do the Maelstrom Staff or a different thing if you want, however, I want to build up the stacks as much as possible. This is infused crusher so we can reduce the physical resistance by an additional 2k. For a monster set we are using slime craw. This is usually a crappy set however it actually increases our bash damage. So this is also heavy divines and max health. Gives you crit chance but then it also gives you minor berserk at all times increasing your damage done by 5%. Minor berserk includes bash damage. With that being covered, I wanted to run 
as much bash damage as possible, but still be a tank. So here is our current stats. So we're looking about 14,000 Magicka, 36,000 health, 22,000 Stam, got about 700 Mag recovery, 500 health recovery, 1,100 Stam recovery. Our weapon damage stays at about 3,200, but as you can see here, our crit can get up to 55%. Our penetration's only 2k, but we got more stuff to get rid of armor. Now, with our resistance, we are a tank, and this can be used for dungeons. We're only at 28.6k resists. Now, on to the consumables. For the food, if you want max health, health recovery, max name, stam recovery, you can do this. However, it's very expensive, and because it's so broad with all the stats, you don't get as much per stat. Dubious Cameron Throne gives you max stam, stam recovery, and max health. This is a bit better on the stats. I, right now, am using Lava Foot. This gives you max stam and stam recovery. It's a lot more resources. If you don't need the recovery, you could do Brazed Rabbit, which gives you max health and max stam. For the potions, you can do the tri stat. We actually get all the buffs we need just from skills but I do like to run the warrior elixir just in case if my skills drop off. I want to keep those buffs up at all times. Now on to the skills. So the first skill is Camouflaged Hunter. This is a fighter's guild skill, and while slotted, you gain major savagery and prophecy, increasing your weapon and spell to crit rating. You also gain minor berserk for five seconds, that doesn't matter. Now, this is our flex spot. You can equip Bound Aegis instead. Bound Aegis gives you 40% block mitigation when you activate it, but while it's slotted, you get 8% Max Magicka and Minor Resolve, which stacks with our armor buff. So now we're right under cap. So if you want more resistances, that is a good option, but you get better damage output using this instead, especially with passes, which we'll go over later. The next skill is Inner Beast. It is an undaunted skill. This is a ranged taunt up to 28 meters. You hit somebody with this and they stay taunted for 15 seconds. The enemy takes 10% more damage from your attacks while this effect persists if they are not a player. This doesn't work in PvP, however in PvE this means the enemy takes 10% more damage from our bash attacks. A ranged ally who's targeting that same enemy also has a 50% chance to do a synergy which will do X amount of damage to the enemy over 3 seconds. That damage number is based off of the player's stats, so if there's an actual DPS who's activated the synergy, it'll be more than what my damage tooltip shows. The next skill is a sword and board ability, it is defensive stance. It is a ward that can block about 12.8k damage for 6 seconds. It scales off of your max health. You reflect any direct damage projectiles. This can occur once per cast. And while you have a shield equipped, not the ward, but an actual shield like we do have, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10%. With this food, which gives us the most amount of health possible, this goes up to 15k. The next skill is also a sword and board ability, and this is one of our main damaging skills. In this recent update, they changed the skill to also scale off of bash damage. However, just like normal skills, it also scales off of weapon damage. So you hit somebody and deal 13.5k physical damage. While slotted, if you block any attack, you get a stack of resentment, which will increase your damage for the next skill of this by 33%, but you have to do it within 10 seconds again. The old version of this, you would have to gain 10 stacks until it could do its big hit, and even then it wasn't as much. Now the other morph technically puts out more damage. The tooltip is split in half but through passes and skills and the gear the damage is actually more however it relies on having a stun end I'll show you guys that later the next skill is pierce armor this is another taunt at melee range it's only 1k stamps so that's much nicer but you also apply minor and major breach on the enemy 
For our ultimate, we are using the Suppression Shield. This is a about 200 ultimate ulti, and it creates a giant dome that lasts for 12 seconds. It applies suppression to all people in it, which means any Magicka abilities are not allowed to be cast. Enemies inside are stunned, and enemy players will be silenced rather than stunned. The silence is negating magic skills from being casted. It also deals about 2.5k magic damage every second. This is what it looks like. That's about the area that you will be applying this to. On our back bar, so the first one is a storm calling skill called Crit Surge. When you activate this, you gain Major Brutality and Sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20% for 33 seconds. While it's active, if you deal any critical damage, you will heal for 3.4k health. It can occur every second. This doesn't even need to be on that bar. If I crit back here, you see that 6.3k, 3.6k? So that can occur no matter which bar you're on, as long as it's proc'd. You want to keep that up at all times. The next skill is a Destruction Staff skill. It is Elemental Blockade. You make a carpet in front of you for 800 damage every second, and we are using the Frost one, which will also give us a shield when we first start it for 1100. So I have this little Frost Shield around me. This can block 11 thousand damage of projectile only. Enemies who are chilled become frozen and are immobilized for four seconds, so it's great for immobilizing people. The next skill we are using is in Storm Calling again, and it is Hurricane. When you activate this, you deal about 600 physical damage, it's not much, for 20 seconds, and as you do this, the circle it attacks in increases in size and the amount of damage as you see it right there this can go up to 160 percent more damage and nine meters in size so as you can see here this is the max size it can go to this will give you major resolve and minor expedition during the entire duration this is for 20 seconds it's very nice the next skill that we are using is dark deal inside of the dark magic skill tree so when you do this it costs 200 magicka you then heal for 8k health and you restore 3.6k stamina instantly and then you also have 2.4k stamina over 20 seconds the thing about this is it first of all the, that crit can heal as you saw there at like a 15k heal of course it's not doing it now there it is the thing about this though is my stamina you see those arrows this doesn't count as recovery. This skill is giving me stam, so normally when you would block, you don't have stam recovery. That's not allowed. But this keeps on going, so even while we're bash attacking, we're still gaining stamina through this skill, and we can also spam it if we're extremely low. And it's a great heal. The next skill we are using is Restraining Prison in the Dark Magic Skill Tree. Because we are a tank for PvE, it is good to have an immobilization, so this will allow us to immobilize enemies in front of me for 6 seconds. If no enemies are immobilized, you get your Magicka back. So just like that, my Magicka is fully back, restored. If you hit an enemy, it grants you major vitality, increasing your healing received by 16% for 2 seconds and that can increase depending on how many people you hit. For our other ulti, we are using the Summon Charged Atronach. This is your best DPS ulti you can throw out. If you're doing PvP, however, it might be better to do your Suppression Field. But the Summon Charged Atronach summons an Atronach that deals 6k damage and stuns enemies for 3 seconds. It'll then start doing a zap attack every second that does 3k damage, and occasionally it'll do another 6k damage AoE attack. If an enemy is near the Atronach, it can do a synergy, giving Major Berserk to the ally and the Atronach for 8 seconds. For the CP, in the green tree, this usually doesn't matter, get steed blessing it'll help you move in between fights and just farm easier in pvp it's very nice treasure hunter increases the quality of your items 
These two are good for your mounts in PvP. This will allow you to get your weapon in chance to have a chance to not go down. This is quite nice when you're in combat. I would recommend getting this, especially if you're doing PvP. There is a lot of falling quite often. This will reduce your damage taken. I would also recommend getting your reduced radius of sneaking and sneak speed, just in case if you're doing some stealthy stuff in PvP. In the blue tree, make sure to get all of your passives. I would recommend getting crit chance first and then coming here to get your crit damage here. In the extended might tree, I would recommend getting the offensive penetration just so we can get more penetration. Then we're gonna come up here to get deadly aim. This will actually increase our bash damage as well since they're all single target. And then Master at Arms will also increase our bash damage because it's a direct damage hit. Down here, we also have Bulwark, which is just giving us more resistances. We aren't at full cap, so this is helping quite a bit. If you want more damage, you could go for Backstabber. However, that only goes when you're flanking, which doesn't happen in PvE if you're the tank. In PvP, people tend to face you. In the red tree, we are going to get armor and max health. Just that way we can get more survivability as a tank. We're going to come up to here to survival instincts. So that way... This, I would focus this as one of the first ones you want to get just because this makes your core combat skills cost 25% less. That means your bash is cheaper. And then we come up here, we actually take this route over to increase our damage shield and damage against shielded enemies. This will help a lot in PvP. Now, this is a tank. We don't exactly have a rotation. The main things about this, you want to keep your buffs up. Keep your dark deal up just so you can get that stam regen. Now, when you throw out your wall of elements, you're getting 2k crusher, so that way they're having less armor. You also want to poke them, so they have even less armor. And if it's PvE, if it's a mob, you can throw your ranged taunt and they'll take 10% more damage from you. At that point, you are at max damage potential for this build. So when we get all that up, I'm going to spam my bash, 8.7k on a non-crit, 15.9k on a crit. That We weren't even fully up ready to go yet either, we still needed to get Zofkins going, so let's reproc our stuff here. 8.7k, 15.9k, so this can get crazy. Now here's the other thing. We have the power bash skill, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit him with that. 31k, 17k when it wasn't a crit. Here's the thing, he's not attacking me. This does 33% more damage when you block an attack. I just looked at my calculator and that would be about 40k on a crit at least. So this one skill can hit very hard, or if you want, the bashes can actually occur every half second, so you can get a lot of damage. I'm getting 10k with no buffs on him, and I don't even have Zofkins proc'd yet. So as a full heavy, very tanky build that has good sources of healing, this thing can hit hard. Now the other morph of Power Slam is Reverberating Bash. As you can see, the damage is halved, so you have two different damage ticks. First you deal about 10k damage, then you stun them for two seconds. After the stun ends, then the enemy takes an additional 10k damage. Here's the thing about this skill. This skill requires them to have the stun end. If you are spamming this out, they'll at one point be immune so you don't get the other half of that 10k. Or if it's an add, they don't break free, so you have to wait two seconds for that additional 10k. Whereas you can spam this and get two different 30ks, you may even be able to get another 30k. Three, that's 90k damage. Whereas this is only going to give you, like, probably about 30k with crits. Now the reason why this technically does more damage on the cheat, because if you see here, 13.4k. This says it's halved. It doesn't say it's increased the damage, yet it's almost 10k. There's an additional 7k damage in here. Well, that comes from our passives. In our passives, everything that increases our bash damage increases that tooltip. 
So in our sword and board, this deadly bash passive increases our bash damage by 1500 and makes them cost less. Our armor also gives us an additional 900 bash damage. The energized passive increases our physical damage which increases bash damage. This increases our damage done when enemies are high health which also increases bash damage. So all these things that are increasing bash damage actually applies to each tooltip. So this is being increased from probably about 10k to 13.5. Whereas that other morph, both tooltips are being increased by all those passives. So technically it has more damage potential per skill cost, but this can put out more damage in a shorter amount of time. As for passives I would focus on, this reduces the cost of non-core combat abilities, which basically means skills. I would focus on getting this after blocking an attack. The next skill basically that you do costs 15% less. We're ideally going to be blocking at all times, so this will be in effect all the time. For sure get this one in the Daedric Summoning. This will reduce the ultimate ability by 15%. The Storm Calling, just get out 10% magic of recovery the physical and shock damage, this reverse execute, and this can help, however, it's not too much on our front bar, so I wouldn't worry about this one as much. In the sword and shield line, I would get all of them. It reduces the cost of your stuff, or increases the damage of your bashing, and then makes you also faster while you're blocking, so it's very much worth it. Now, another ulti you could do is the shield ball. One more for reflects all projectiles that are cast at you, whatever. The main thing is when you activate either of these morphs, you're automatically blocking all attacks at no cost, which means you can for free get your resentment stack from your skill and spam your skill. The shield discipline morph would be the better option. It also makes all of your sword and board abilities cost nothing. So you can spam your power slam and it's automatically blocking for you so you can and it's for free so you're just getting free damage for days in the destruction staff i would first get ancient knowledge this will allow you to block with the ice staff reduces the cost of blocking and then i'd also get tri focus that way you use magicka to block instead of stamina i would get all of your heavy armor passives in the fighters guild the main one the main reason why we're using the Camouflage Hunter is because here you get 3% extra weapon and spell damage per Fighter's Guild ability slotted. And when you kill an enemy, which we actually can since we're a tank that does damage, you get 3 ultimate every time you get the kill. We are a Khajiit, so we get all 3 stat recovery, all 3 max stat, but most importantly we get 12% extra crit damage, which will add up towards our critting. Now let's go take this into our skill caller peak to show it off. As a reminder guys, you do get minor expedition while in your wind form, so it does help you with running around. So get your buffs up. We're gonna hit these enemies here. So I'm not even gonna debuff them. The only debuff going on is our wall of elements, so that way we can reduce their armor just a little bit. Other than that, they have no debuffs. I'm going to start bashing right now. They're already dead. Two shot that wolf. Okay, these are not even debuffed. I'm going to use my skill on this guy. 25k, not debuffed. Okay, so now we're going to get this guy. Everything's up. 36k damage right there as a tank. For a 2k skill, we just did 36k. This build hits hard, and it's a tank. So, let's say we actually just wanted to tank as a normal dungeon. We got our CC. So we can just hit that, so now everything CC'd. We have our taunts, and we have shields, so we can just sit here and tank the bosses if we want. Or we can also you know, help kill the bosses. Stamina getting low, use your Dark Deal skill. I don't even need to use my Magicka skill. 38k right there. Getting low health. Use our heal from Dark Deal. Let's 
pull these enemies here. Remember, every two seconds we have an AoE bash attack that does major damage. So, I mean, this, uh, this build is powerful. I mean, our light attacks only deal 5k damage. Our bash does 10k. So, this thing can dish out damage. We're almost at cap for armor. I mean, 33k right there. I mean, this thing can slaughter people. Now, in PvP, we don't have like any, we don't have any poles even for PvE, so there's an issue there. And we do go through stamina like crazy because we're just bashing for days, but that's all depending on how you guys want to use the build. One dark deal and a potion is enough to get full stand back. So this thing, I mean, we're clearing through this dungeon faster than some of the other builds. And this is all melee range. I'm having to run up to these people in full heavy armor. So this build is tons of fun and very survivable. Now, we went crit for a reason. It's hard to get max resistances and everything because that's what bash damage is based off of is resistance and we have actual bash enchants so it's hard to get your weapon damage also up at the same time while still using a sword and board on your front bar so it very much turned into a crit build that's a tank. Now guys, I just noticed we actually ended up hitting about 22.7k when I was just messing around showing you guys the skills on this. I have actually gone about 30 to 40k actually doing a somewhat rotation on this guy, just spamming the normal bash, not even using the skill. So this is a pretty hard ability, just setting up our normal tank stuff. Now onto the outfitting. The helmet is a heavy minotaur helm, if you can tell. The breastplate is heavy bloodforge curious. The shoulders are heavy crimson oath pauldrons. The hands are heavy malakath. The waist is heavy ancestral high elf. The legs are heavy thorn legion. The feet are heavy worm colt. The hammer is waking flame. The shield is crimson oath. The staff is dremora staff. For the main color across the entire set, on the front parts, we are using the Lycanthrope Gray. For the dark brown, that is the strap across the breastplate, we are using the Motif Master Brown. That is the same brown on the hands for the leather and for the boot straps. For the lighter brown, that is on the belt buckle, we are using Dwarven Brass and that is also on the hands, which is on the back plate of the armor. For the lighter gray on most of these other pieces here, we are using LeMay's white on the legs and on the rest of the mace, the rest of the shield, and the rest of the staff. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a very fun build to make. I was actually surprised it got this far. It was a very interesting build idea, and it was difficult to test what increased our bash damage, but I am glad that information is now out there for you guys to try and come up with something on your own. Like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of this content. If there is any set you guys would like to check out before I get to it, you'll I'm planning on getting to all of them, so you'll just help get to whatever set you want faster. So I will see you guys next time.